Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning into The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, click subscribe to receive the latest notification of new videos as they come out, and all the links to everything I talk about in this video, including gear discussed, or the Canon EOS R5 contest giveaway can be found in the description down below along with my affiliate links. Today I have a lot of news. I have good news and I have bad news. I want to start off with the good news. Sony has been responding to people who have bought the a7S III and they've said it's been doing really, really well. Let's take a look at that communication. Thank you for using Sony products. The order for the digital single lens camera, a7S III, which we started accepting orders on Tuesday, August the 4th, 2020, greatly exceeds our expectations and it may take longer to deliver the product. We will do our best to respond to your requests as much as possible, so please wait for a while. All right, so just keep in mind, this camera is supposed to be, it'll start showing up around September the 24th. A few lucky of you, I bet, will start to receive it just a few days before. This is pretty normal with a pre-order. Companies do their best to make sure that you at least get it on the day of, so that sometimes you end up getting it a few days earlier. And now for some bad news. As most of you are probably already aware, Canon received a major security breach uh, a couple of weeks ago that has resulted in several services being down. They've lost about, well, I wouldn't say they've lost 10 terabytes of information, but 10 terabytes of information is being held hostage in a ransomware attack. So several sites are affected. Um, Canon USA is affected. My, their Microsoft Teams is affected. Uh, the whole Canon USA website, as well as internal applications. And I'm, this is beginning to make sense because I was re reaching out to Canon last week and they said, well, they're having problems with their systems. And this was Canon Canada as well. So I imagine some of the systems in Canon USA are also used by other Canon um, regional uh, areas as well, such as Canada and who knows what other areas are affected. So uh, it is kind of widespread. It is affecting a lot of people. Canon USA is one of the largest markets for Canon. So this is kind of a big deal. Um, and actually let, let's cut right to the message that Canon has put out internally, not externally, but internally to their staff about this. Canon USA Inc. and its subsidiaries understand the importance of maintaining the operational integrity and security of our systems. Access to some Canon systems is currently unavailable as a result of the ransomware security incident we recently discovered. This is unrelated to the recent issue which affected image.canon. We immediately implemented our response protocols and began an investigation. Cybersecurity experts who have worked with other companies that have had similar issues had been engaged. We are working quickly to address the issue and to restore applications. As updates are available, we will do our best to communicate via email and ENS. We appreciate your patience as we work through this incident. Wow, it's getting a little warm out here. By the way, I am shooting outside right now. It's 84 degrees. It's not even 11 o'clock in the morning yet and it is humid. I am sweating. I probably look terrible, but I wanted to put myself in a rough um, scene here to kind of show off how the R5 is doing. I'm shooting in 4K HQ again in C-Log 10-bit 422. Uh, I've got some light coming down on me here. I've got some shade on me and it's a really tough environment. So do forgive me if I start to sweat, but um, it's all done in, in the pursuit of science. All right, so I, I want to use this story as a bit of a learning experience. Um, Canon and a lot of companies spend millions of dollars a year on cybersecurity, on protecting their environments. You've got endpoint security, and this is technology that's used to protect the endpoint, the computers themselves, through antivirus, through spam filtering, and all that kind of stuff. Then you have corporate email, and that's protected through an additional layer of security that helps protect from spam. Uh, spam is actually the single most cause of most of these ransomware attacks. Um, th these companies also have then what is called intrusion prevention and intrusion detection systems and firewalls, which are the first perimeter of defense to the organization. And sometimes internally, individual departments may have additional layers of security and firewalls to help protect them. So if uh, uh, um, a security incident breaches one level of security, it has to pass through several others. So companies and organizations are getting at much better at protecting their environment, and these systems do not prevent attacks. They reduce the risk and help to reduce the impact of a security breach. But most often, the weakest link is me. It's you. How a lot of these ransomware attacks happen is you're sent an email and it looks legit. You click on it and before you know it, you're into a ransomware situation. A lot of these emails, just a couple of years ago, it was pretty easy to tell they were spam because the grammar would be terrible and the spelling was terrible. That's not the case anymore. These phishing emails, as they're called, 
look just as good as the real McCoy, the ones coming from a bank. So if you get an email from your bank asking you uh, to change your password or letting you know there's been a security breach or anything uh, and to click on a link, don't do it. Uh, if it sounds really serious, well then call up the bank or go to your bank's portal, log in and check to see if anything's there, start a chat with support services or just call up the bank. So just my personal view on this is I do not click on any links in email. If I do receive an email with a link and I do know the person, then I'll call them up and I'll ask them, did you just send me this? Is this authentic? Before accepting it. Uh, but if I don't know the person, I won't click on it. And, and this is really tough because quite often, let's imagine there's a birth in the family or you've had some major news. It's quite often, I don't know how these guys do it. Maybe they're watching Facebook or something, but they, they know something's happened and then they they hack one of your friend's computers and they blast out some emails. Hey, look, a, a, a photo of baby so-and-so and you click on it and now you're into a ransomware situation. And there's these are very traumatic because not only can you risk losing money, but you can also risk losing photos. Um, imagine losing photos or video of a, a relative that's recently passed away. That would be really, really tough to deal with uh, in, in addition to any financial loss. So be very, very careful. You can put antivirus software and other um, security software, anti-malware software on your computer, but just keep in mind that your email and even texts that are being sent to you can very easily, if you click on a link, uh, send you into a ransomware attack. The other thing I, I'd advise to be very careful with is we're starting to see a lot more phone calls from the IRS, from Revenue Canada, from various government sources claiming, or even the police, um, with some sort of scenario where you have to act and it usually involves money. Um, hang up. Um, if you think that if you're really worried and concerned about this, then call up the actual local police or the revenue agency mentioned and ask them if they know anything about this. So protect yourselves. Use this as an example of what could potentially happen to all of us. Remember, so, uh, cybersecurity doesn't prevent a breach or an impact. It just lessens the chance. We must be vigilant to help protect ourselves. All right, the last bit of news for today, and again, this is a negative one. Nikon did report their results. They reported uh, their first quarter results, but they also projected uh, full year results out into 2021. And things don't look so good, but we're not really too surprised about this. I'm going to get into the numbers, but the one thing to kind of remember here, the, the losses that Nikon's suffering isn't really that big of a concern in terms of Nikon's viability. It's more of a concern at how Mitsubishi views this. Because you see, Nikon isn't a standalone company. They fit under the Mitsubishi um, umbrella of companies. So if Mitsubishi is having trouble or if they're unhappy with the performance of Nikon, that's where I'm most concerned about. So I'm, I'm waiting to hear how Mitsubishi does. I'm, I'm listening to anything related to Mitsubishi that they say in their financial statements because that could impact Nikon as well. So let's take a look at these numbers. So first quarter results aren't that good. It's a revenue of 25.1 billion. Earnings are down 8.1 billion. And this is all in yen and not dollars. And a margin of, well, negative 32%. Now, if you want to convert these to US dollars, it's about a factor of one to 100. And if we look at a full year projected out, revenue is 130 billion yen. Earnings are down 40 billion or a margin of 30.8%. This is quite significant, but not really surprising. These numbers themselves, don't really tell us a whole lot. Yes, if I was a financial analyst, I could really dig deep and get more information, talk about PE, talk about the overall trend against all the other companies. But we've seen this with Canon, we've seen this with Sony, we're seeing this with all of them. Every company is impacted. Now, the good news for Canon and the good news for Sony is they've just released amazing cameras and this is giving them a bit of a bump. There's a huge demand for the R5, there's a huge demand for the A7S III, and this will help if they can get enough product out to the consumers while the demand is there. Nikon? We're supposed to be hearing about the Z8 anytime soon. I haven't heard anything in a while. I think it's been about June or July. So hopefully, uh, we were hearing it was supposed to be around the end of July. And here we are, April, no, not April, August the 10th, and we still don't have anything from Nikon. So hopefully, hopefully, we hear something soon because the, Nikon needs, needs a win here. The Z5 is not a big deal. It's not big enough to get people to come to the platform. Um, and for the price, I'd say it's a little bit overpriced for what it does. It, it's very similar to the EOS R, but the EOS R, even when it came out, was, well, it was considered lacking against the competition. And that was two years ago. It's still a decent camera. You can still get great results from it. But the Z5, at its price, really is, 
is not exciting the market. If you're not exciting the market, you're not exciting people that are looking at these cameras, well, that's not good when your revenue is down on the tubes. So the Z8 hopefully will be on par with the, um, I would expect it to be more on par with the Canon EOS R5 than I would be with, or than I would expect it to be with the, um, ah, the heat's getting to me here, than I'd expect it to be with the A7S III because the A7S III is primarily a video centric camera whereas the R5 is more balanced between photo and video with it being more tilted towards the photo side. So hopefully we get some news there. And of course, Panasonic is supposed to be announcing the GH6 sometime in the next couple of months. And then of course, September, October, as we get into that season, the fall season, we'll get another round of cameras, probably from Canon and who knows who else. So uh, things are gonna settle down a little bit as we get into the school season, as we get into about the first week or two of September, then things will start to heat up again. Oh, but hopefully not outside. So what temperature is it now? Yeah, it's gone up another degree. It's now 84 degrees. It's going up to 90 degrees today. Uh, we had a bit of a break for about a week. It was nice, it was hot, but it wasn't humid. And I am just sweltering right now. I can feel, I can feel the moisture all over me. Uh, and I'm really curious to see how this edits. Again, I'm shooting this on the Canon EOS R5 in 4K HQ, uh, C-Log 10-bit 422. I've been filming for about 17 minutes right now and the camera's still going. So it's able to record well in this heat and it hasn't stopped me yet. I really do like 4K HQ. I wish there wasn't an overheat on this, but most of the videos that I'm shooting with it, it really isn't a concern. And on the weekend when I shot my Q&A, I shot that with 4K30 with C-Log and apparently I, a lot of people liked it. So I think C-Log kind of helps make up for the loss of detail from 4K HQ to 4K30. But again, from what I'm seeing with the compression on YouTube, we're not getting the full benefit of 4K HQ. What I see on my monitor before I actually send it to uh, YouTube is so much better than what I actually see when I posted it. Uh, on the weekend after I posted my Q&A um, video and then the video I followed up with that, I was absolutely stunned at the difference in quality. But that's it for now. There might be more news coming out today, and if so, I will cover that. But thank you so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win the Canon EOS R5. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.